Listen up. Nerve herders, listen up. Welcome back. I'm Captain Xavier, and Nerf events are happening again. LARPs and Nerf Wars and HVZs and all that jazz. And so, of course, the question on everyone's mind is, but what will I wear? And it's actually a very important question, and you, you really should spend some time thinking about it. Not just what you're going to wear, but why you want to wear it. And the psychology of that is, we'll touch on that later. Very important stuff. Um, but really, there's two fundamental questions I think you need to ask, first of all, are is what I'm planning to wear allowed at the event or the venue, uh, according to the rules set by, by the people with the authority to set rules, and is it really appropriate for the event and venue? Because just because something's allowed doesn't necessarily mean it's a good idea. Now that first one is kind of the, the easier question because it's, it's objective. Do the rules allow it? And there's two groups of people, or two entities really, that can determine, that really get to set dress codes for events. You've got the, the organizer of the event, whoever's setting it up and whoever's responsible for it. They have a right to determine a dress code for their event because it's their event. They get to set the rules. And if they want to require certain things or if they want to not allow certain things, that's entirely up to them. Somebody running a LARP might require that you come in costume, whereas somebody running uh, an HVZ on a public campus may not allow you to wear plate carriers or whatever. Um, and you don't have to like their choices, but it's their event, therefore it's their rules, and you do need to abide by them, because choosing not to, to go in a, something that you know is against the rules, is childish, frankly. Um, it, it doesn't do any good for anybody. If you don't like it, don't go to the event, or contact them and... and, and and make your displeasure well known. And if enough people do so, maybe they'll change the rules, or, and, or maybe they won't, and you just don't attend. The other entity with the authority to set rules is the owner of the venue, whether it's you know somebody who owns the private property that a LARP is taking place on, or uh, the city that controls the, the park that the war is taking place in, or the administration of the campus uh, that the HVZ is taking place on, or whatever. Uh, they have the, the right and the responsibility to set what they feel is an appropriate dress code. And again, they get to do that because it's, it's their house, their rules, is, is what it comes down to. And again, choosing to break those rules intentionally is childish because it can get the entire event shut down. If, if they see somebody who's going to their, this event that's breaking their rules, they can say, right, well, then I guess this event doesn't get to take place. So you're, you're putting the entire event at risk for something that's... Again, like I said, childish. Um, but again, that's the objective one. Follow the rules. Any event is probably going to post their rules, and sometimes the, the rules that are posted by the club were actually given to them by the venue. So it might not be the club's choice to not allow certain things. That might actually be a rule that's been handed to them by the administration, and so getting bent out of shape about them, again, doesn't do them any good, because it might not have been their choice. But um, follow the rules. Now, the second one is the much more nebulous one because it is entirely subjective, and that is whether or not it's appropriate. And this, there is unfortunately no simple answer for this because of how varied our hobby is. Something that would be appropriate and even encouraged at a, a, a private LARP like Afterworlds might not even be allowed at a public HVZ, like, a, you know, End War or something. And at the same time, something that might be perfectly acceptable at End War might not be considered acceptable at Afterworlds. You know, this, just showing up in you know, khakis and a t-shirt and a stock Nerf Blaster, that's fine at End War. I mean, if, if that's what you want to run, cool. Nobody's going to have a problem with that. But going to a, a, a full immersion LARP without a costume ruins the immersion for everybody else. So it, it goes both ways, and it can get, it can get confusing, and it can be... A, a, people don't like, you know, thinking. I certainly don't. I think as little as possible. But it is something you need to, to, to consider. And for the most part, I'm going to be talking from here on out about the public events. And that's the thing that's so nice about Nerf. Because we have the public image of being safe and harmless, we get to use public spaces. We can have Nerf wars in public parks. We can have HVZs on college campuses. Because Nerf is seen as safe. It's non-threatening. It's not dangerous. That is how they view it. Now, those of us from the inside know that some of the stuff we build is decidedly not public safe. You know, the 400 FPS blasters could definitely do some harm to somebody who didn't have eye protection. And that's why we have rules about not using those. But, still, the public perception is that we are non-threatening and safe. And we absolutely don't want to lose that. Because if we do, 
we risk losing access to those public spaces. Campuses may stop allowing us to have HVZs. Public parks may stop allowing Nerf Wars. So we want to maintain that image of safe and friendly. And so my general advice on what you should wear to a Nerf War is something very nerfy. Something that if seen from a distance by someone who has no idea what's going on, their first thought is, a bunch of nerds playing Nerf. Wonder if they got any extra blasters I'm gonna play. That's the image we want to project. And this is coming from someone who used to be the worst offender of going the other direction. Um, when I first got into HVZ back in the University of Idaho 10 years ago, I was dressed like this. No, oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Very height of fashion. We were wearing whatever random mishmash of tactical gear and whatever we could find from Sergeant Kyle's mountain of OD green surplus. We looked like Fidel Castro's rejects. Um, and uh, we, we were playing NPCs and we were supposed to be, you know, these professional zombie hunters and all of that, but it still really wasn't particularly appropriate to be wearing on a college campus. Now, there was University of Idaho, but uh, after two games of us showing up like this, they actually changed the rules to no longer allow camo. So we had a negative effect on the game just because of the way that we were dressed. Uh, anyway, we, uh, we then switched over to uh, WSU, and we, we upped our game, and oh, did it get worse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was running around WSU campus dressed like this, and seemed to think that that was perfectly all right. That was all right by, by them, by the, the school. We were again playing professional mercenaries, and so it fit the character. And we checked in with campus police and made sure they know what we looked like and when, when we were on campus and all of that. And, and it's still, all those excuses, it still wasn't appropriate. Look at this. Uh, in the previous iteration, it was at least before I'd modified ire, so the blaster was still yellow, but then, I mean, yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, I did get campus police called on me once. I think we'll discuss that more later. Uh, years down the line, I start traveling to events, and I decided that this was just too bulky to be traveling with, and so I went to a, st a more slimmed-down model. At this point, uh, I had at least gotten it into my head that the all-black blaster was a bad idea and moved on to more you know, brightly colored blasters, but the outfit was still just as bad, and finally... <laughs> Only, like, end of 2019, early 2020, it finally sunk in that this was just not okay, and what's more, not as cool as I thought. And I, of course, I struggled against that for so long because, of course, I wanted to look badass. And we'll get more to that in that psychology we talked about, but eventually it broke through that, no, this, is, this isn't cool, this isn't appropriate, this isn't okay. I should be doing better, especially as an influencer. I should probably be uh, trying to improve things. And so finally, my loadout switched over to this. Look at all that orange. So much better. Simply love it. And it was just the, the natural progression from, I knew it was not okay to have a black blaster with orange highlights, so I went to orange blasters with black highlights. Well, why then was it appropriate to wear an all black outfit? So I switched to an orange outfit with black highlights. I made my outfit match my blasters, and I love it. Uh, it, it just, it, everything about it feels better. This, from a distance, screams, oh, a bunch of nerds playing Nerf. Weird. As opposed to the previous outfit, which rather shouted, is there an active shooter on campus? Which we want to avoid. So, yeah. And more than just that, just the appearance of it being better, it... The psychology of it, to me, is very, very important, and we're finally going to touch on all that psychology stuff. What you wear has a very powerful psychological effect, both on the people who see you and on yourself. When people see you in, you know, in a uniform of some kind, they assume that that is appropriate, that you, you are that person, you should, you know, that you have that authority or that power, what have you. That's why people wear uniforms. It's one of the reasons militaries and police officers and doctors and businessmen, they dress the way they do so they will be treated like what they appear to be. Um, but it also has a very important uh, psychological impact on you. When you dress up like something, it helps you be that thing. It gives you the confidence. It makes you feel more appropriate or powerful and, and, and 
And it's very important. You especially see this in actors who say that the first time they saw themselves in full costume and makeup, they were able to finally truly be that character. And obviously it has the effect of, you know, we see them in the costume and it makes it more believable for, that they are playing that character. It helps with the suspension of disbelief. But it, it very much impacts your, your attitude, your behavior, your, your confidence and all of that. And in something like a LARP or, you know, in your, you're an actual professional, that's very important that you feel that you're supposed to do that and you do it with, with confidence and whatnot. And in, in LARPs you get into character and it makes everything more real and all of that. But we don't want that at an HVZ. We don't want people seeing us dressed like SWAT members and thinking we are actually SWAT members. And it's important to you to know that you're not a SWAT member and that you can't act like one on campus. Uh, this, I have seen the negative effect of that where, you know, somebody saw me in the full black hat go around a corner and they had no idea what was going on, so they called security. Like they should have, because they had no idea what was going on. Campus showed up, they knew it was me, they saw it, oh, hi, yeah, you know, it's just us. They're like, oh, yeah, someone called it in, we had to respond. They're like, yeah, absolutely, you did, I understand. The person actually came over and was apologizing. I'm like, what are you apologizing for? What if I had been a shooter and you hadn't called it in? How would you feel then? You did the right thing. I knew the risks I was taking when I dressed up like this. Or rather, I should have known. I really still hadn't gotten through. I was an idiot in my 20s and early 30s and let's pretend that it's changed. Um, but I also saw it at PSU where some folks that were, uh, were gussied up got a little too into it and were forcing non-players to get on the ground at Blaster Point and yelling at them and someone called in an active shooter and nearly got the entire event shut down. Now, I'm not saying that the way they were dressed up entirely influenced that, but I, I would argue very strongly that it almost certainly had an effect. And if not the outfit itself, the mentality that suggested to them that dressing like that was appropriate in the first place probably had an effect on that. And so that's why you really need to take a look at why is it you want to dress like that? And if the reason is you want to be scary, you want to be intimidating, you want to feel badass, think about that. Is that actually what you want to do at this event? Do you want people to be afraid of you? And if the wrong people are made afraid of you, could that have a negative impact on the game? And that is why I dress like this. This is the outfit of a nerfer. Also maybe, you know, a hunter, but I don't think anyone is going to think I'm hunting deer on UMBC campus. But something like this, brightly colored, that matches the blaster, not only does it tell the people who are from the outside that, that this is safe, that this is harmless, that this is okay, but it reminds me that I am a 39-year-old man playing with Nerf blasters on a campus pretending to hunt zombies, and that I don't need to take myself seriously, and that it's just for fun, and that, that I can relax. And that has, that has truly helped me, because I used to be very afraid of, you know, not being the ultimate badass, that if I, if I died early in the game, no one would respect me anymore. And maybe I've just mellowed in my old age, but now it's, oh, let's just go do this thing. And I really do believe that dressing like this really, really helps. Um, and if you need another example of how this is still badass, this is Nerf badass, here is a picture that will hopefully help you. This is a picture of the Mandalorian cosplay group in full glory at a con somewhere. And the Mandalorians are fairly universally agreed to be one of the most badass entities in all of sci-fi. And look at all this color! So if they can have yellows and orange and blues and greens and pinks and whatever, and still be badass, so can you. Paint your blaster bright colors that you like, and then make your outfit match the blaster. And I guarantee you it will, it will just be better. It'll make you feel better, it'll make the, the public relations better, it'll just make it all so much better. I love wearing orange now, I feel svelte. So there it is! There's my advice on what to wear to Nerf. Thank you for watching. Bang a rang! Train?